Hi, in this video we're going to talk about metabolism and really focus on the energy, see what I did there, NRG, energy, pretty sweet, huh, uh, that occur in different types of chemical reactions. So we're really going to focus on, um, on the energy that is involved when chemical reactions take place. Do you know what these words mean? Do you know what these four words mean? Pause the video right now. Tell yourself what these words mean. Condensation means the removal of water. Hydrolysis is the addition of water. Hydro, of course, means water. And lysis is to split. Once again, dehydration has the same meaning as condensation. Dehydrate. Dehydration, the removal of a water molecule. Synthesis, to s synthesize or synthesis is to build something. To build something from simpler components to more complex components. So the energetics of, of life processes, the involvement of energy is so important to biology. The transfer of energy from one feeding level to the next is what sustains, uh, sustains life. All living things need to obtain, to acquire and obtain energy. And I want you to remember these four very important words. All matter. All matter contains energy. All matter contains energy. Therefore, there is energy that is involved from the plants that it get eaten by a grasshopper, which in turn gets eaten by some sort of rodent, which might get eaten by a hawk. There's an energy transfer from level to level to level. Well, what is the energy being used to do? It's used to build and run chemical reactions. So energy is used to build up more complex organisms, or excuse me, more complex molecules from simpler molecules. And energy is released when complex molecules are broken down into simple molecules. So all of the chemical reactions of life can be summarized uh, or referred to as what's called metabolism. The metabolism is the sum total of all chemical reactions for a living thing. So all metabolic processes are going to have something to do with energy, and they can really be divided into two, two types. Either the synthesis reactions, which are called anabolic reactions or anabolism, or, or the reactions that break down compounds. So those are called catabolic or con, um, catabolism reactions. So really, all metabolic processes fit under one of those two categories. We're either using energy to build things up from simpler compounds to more complex compounds and molecules, or we're releasing energy by breaking down molecules from more complex into their simpler components. So the two examples of these chemical reactions are types of reactions that are called condensation. Condensation is where you take a water molecule out to join two molecules or two substances, or more, but in the simplest form, we've got two simple molecules with the help of an enzyme, which we will talk about down the road. Uh, we take a water out in order to bond those two things into a more complex and more organized molecule. The opposite of that in the opposite world here is the hydrolysis reaction. That's where we take a more organized compound and we use water to split that compound into two simpler, uh, two simpler products. A little more complex look at these things. We've got a condensation, which is also known as dehydration synthesis. Dehydration means a water is coming out, uh, and we're going to build more complex molecules from simpler molecules. The hydrolysis or digestion is where you tear down um, molecules by adding water and we will use that to split them into their component parts. By just looking at these two examples that I gave you, which one do you believe the products are more organized than the reactants and in which one do you think the products are less organized than the reactants? Speaking in terms specifically of energy and energy's involvement in chemical reactions, some chemical reactions actually release energy, and some chemical reactions require energy. So make sure that you know the terminology of these, and we've already done some of this 
um, by just matching the types of reactions and what happens between the products and the reactants, um, and namely what happens to the energy. So exergonic reactions uh, are, a part of, are the types of cell metabolism that release energy so that the cells and the organisms can use that energy. These are also uh, referred to as um, exothermic reactions, exothermic, so releasing heat energy, and then endergonic reactions. Endergonic reactions, such as photosynthesis, there's an energy input, and that cells need to use this energy to build structures like sugars uh, in, in photosynthesis or to build tissues. Those can also be called endothermic, where um, we're taking in energy. So even pause this video, take a look at this slide, make sure that all the components of this slide make sense to you. You need to be able to distinguish between exergonic and endergonic reactions. Continuing with the, in terms of energy, endergonic versus exergonic reactions, we want to take a look at these little uh, graphs here. And these are two examples of graphs that you should be very familiar with. These refer to the energy that's involved. And the energy is noted as uh, delta G. That little, remember, we've seen delta before, but we saw a lowercase Greek letter delta when we were talking about uh, delta positive and negative ends of a hydrogen um, that are involved in hydrogen bonding. But delta G, that's a capital Greek delta, means change in. Anytime you see that in science, that th symbolizes change in. So we're looking at change in G. This is called Gibbs free energy. Changes in free energy. Free energy is the energy that is either available for organisms to, to take in or it is released by chemical reactions. And you want to be familiar with both of these, these graphs. The first one is exergonic. Look at what happens to the product. The product is less ordered than the reactants were. So there has to be a release of energy. Therefore, since there's a release of energy from the system, that's a negative delta G, or in other words, a decrease in the free energy. In endergonic reactions, energy is invested. In, otherwise, in other words, it is put in. So there has to be an energy input if you want the products to actually be at a higher organization level than the reactants, and therefore there is a positive delta G. Another look at the same concept is we see the same graph here. Now these are endergonic reactions again, and over time there's going to be an increase of the organization. So from the reactants to the products, the products are going to be more organized than the reactants. So we're going to build up more complex molecules than we had from the original reactants. So there has to be an energy input. This is simply looking at how we go to more organizer. It's like rolling a ball uphill. The only way to accomplish this, there has to be an input of energy. So there's an input of energy in order to get to that higher organization level. I, look, I think about the analogy to raking leaves. The only way to organize, the only way to go from less organized to more organized is to have an input of energy. The only way to make that pile of leaves in your yard is to use the rake. If there's no input of energy or effort to actually organize this, then you're going to end up with scattered out leaves. The only way to organize them into a pile is to use energy. Now exergonic reactions, again, the, the opposite of that condition, um, these are downhill or spontaneous reactions. The reactants are more organized than the products this time, so there's going to be energy released. We're going to break bonds of the reactants and end up with simpler products without any energy in, of input. In fact, energy is released. So this is like going from a nice organized pile of leaves to the leaves just blowing all over the place. Now, the leaves moving around in your yard is not a chemical reaction, but just think about the original uh, reactants versus the products. Where is there more organization and where is there less organization? So the sum total of metabolic reactions that involve energy in living things, um, the ener these two types of reactions that we're introducing are what are called coupled. So in other words, th uh, both types of chemical reactions, both the ones that release energy and the ones that require energy, are typically coupled in organisms. That means that they both occur. Digestion reactions occur so that that energy can be used in building up different products. 
living things are, are kind of the ultimate recycler. Put it real simply, uh, organisms eat food so that they can break down that food to the nutrients and the molecules that they want to build back up their tissues again. They take the energy out of the food they eat to energize the processes that they need to build up in their body. So digestion reactions are coupled with synthesis reactions. Hydrolysis, hydrolysis, are, rea are coupled with condensation reactions. Exothermic and endothermic. Exergonic and endo endergonic. Catabolic, anabolic. Breaking down, building up. These chemical reactions are coupled within the body. So the takeaway here is what's going on with energy in chemical reactions? Are the chemical reactions that occur, are they more ordered to start and less ordered to uh, at the end so energy is being released? Or does there have to be an input of energy so that we can go from a less ordered state to a more ordered state with the products? So again, you want to review the, these coupled reactions. Are you talking about breaking down substances or building up substances.